All right, the RTX 5080. I've got it in the system right now, running the Pimax Crystal Light. I'm in a league session. This is practice. I think we have about 30 minutes left, so I didn't give myself much time to do this. GT4 is sharing the track with LMP2 and TCR. This is a very small, ridiculous track to do something like this for the league, but hey, it's gonna be fun. Uh, it's also not very demanding on this uh, 5080. I'm at 0.75 render resolution, which is quite high, and my G meter is still at about 7.5, I think, is the peak going down the pit straight. My favorite way to do the Pimax is I have my spotter uh, coming through the headset. I'm using the microphone on the Pimax right now, so you guys get a feel for what that quality is like. the corkscrew LMP2 off. Look at all of the rubbish on the road. Oh my god. All right. Um, it never ceases to amaze me the clarity. Like for example, being over there and being able to see the cars go through turn one and, and whatnot, it's pretty amazing. So I've been using the Pimax Crystal Light for several weeks, I guess months now. Um, I, I, I'm always impressed with the clarity when I put it on. I still use the Quest 3 every once in a while. I even throw on the Valve Index for uh, nostalgic reasons, I suppose. And every time I step back to the Crystal, it is just, it's just so impressive how well it works. I do use a Lighthouse. The Lighthouse is like way up there. I have two, I just use one. With one, it's okay. Now, as you can see, I use a big virtual mirror. Um, that's just the, my preference to driving. I don't like looking in the side mirrors. Without the feeling of the G-forces, I don't know where the, the car is pointed. I know it's my problem, but um, the big virtual mirror is great for me because I can just look at the apex and see what the hell is happening around me. Regardless, the tracking is fine. Like I very rarely have an issue, even with one uh, lighthouse. All right, let me try this again. It looks like these guys, oh, this guy wants to go to the inside this time. Whoa, almost lost it. So I am an affiliate with Pimax, which means you can use the code BENCHMARK to receive a discount on the Crystal Light and help support this channel. You can check out my first impressions here and all of the benchmarking today will be with the Pimax Crystal Light. The 5080 model I'm testing today is the Shadow 3X from MSI. This is the OC variant. I guess you would call this a low-end model in MSI's lineup. But what I find most surprising is the size of this card. It reminds me of an RTX 2080 more so than a 4080. The three fans are smaller than 90 mils and it has the six pin power connector. The shroud on the back is plastic, but the card's size, it's basically a small form factor or really close to it. It's much smaller than the 9070 XT above and the 4080 Super beneath. Just look at the difference in thickness. Like it's much, much smaller. Even my 5070 Ti, which is a Vanguard edition, is quite a bit bigger than this shadow. So if you have a small chassis and you're looking for a no thrills small form factor, maybe this one works for you. I delivered power to all of these cards through Thermal Grizzly's WireView Pro. I have no affiliation with them. It's just a cool product and they gave me one. I'm once again using my 9800X3D on an MSI Mag Tomahawk motherboard. I've used a mixture of G-Force and Adrenaline drivers and the frame times were captured through the OpenXR toolkit, just the regular 132. GPU prices are falling, even compared to last week, they're at least $50 cheaper. I think the best bang for buck entry card for VR would be a 50, 70, 12 gigabytes. I don't have one for testing, but at $550 MSRP, that's a banger. It will be considerably faster than a 5060 Ti, even the 16 gigabyte variant. Also, I have a buy me a coffee page set up now. Only with your support can I keep making content like this. I also have a patron page and YouTube super thanks. So shout out to my supporters. And if you need help, reach out via email to become a client.
All of today's testing has been done using iRacing replays. They provide a consistent benchmark, the same scenario across all these different D GPUs, and the performance difference to real-time multiplayer is negligible. These are the settings I used for Pimax Play. It's 0.5 resolution for some of the testing, 0.75 for the other testing. I'm not using their foveated rendering. It has CPU issues, which I showed in my first impressions video. And Pimax OpenXR with the OpenXR for iRacing works the best for me. I'm sticking to the same graphics and replay settings that I had used previously for this benchmarking. I'm only running two mirrors, even if the car supports four. So we're looking at the VR footage as shown on the monitor. This was Pimax Play at 0.75 using the iRacing graphics we just talked about. First benchmark is at Talladega in the trucks. And this is very easy on the CPU because we only have about 20 something cars and they're all the same model. Sending this to the top, let's see some results. Here is our trusty histogram, our area chart showing the performance of all of the graphics cards. For a GPU to have perfect performance, all of its data has to be to the left of our 11.1 .1 millisecond line. That represents 90 Hertz. So for example, the 9070 XT is hot pink. And if we fill in this area chart, it would look like this. The data I've collected for the GPU frame times are all contained within that pink area and therefore beneath the 90 Hertz line and on time. But due to the overlap of all the data, I don't leave these filled in. So we just see this rainbow spaghetti. I'm going to use the same colors for these cards as you see here, and they're always going to be in the same order in the legend or in the bar charts. The MSI 5080 is this royal blue color, and it's over here to the left, absolutely crushing this benchmark. I'm benching at the lowest possible resolution on a Pimax Crystal Light, which is taking the resolution slider and sending it all the way to the left for 0.5. I don't recommend using a resolution that low. It doesn't look good in the headset, and the footage above is at 0.75. In my Deja Vu video with Pimax and iRacing, I showed the FPS gain that can be made by dropping uh, in-game graphics quality from iRacing and actually getting playable results from lesser hardware but we're here talking about a 5080, so let's increase the resolution to 0.75. I've dropped the bottom three graphics cards because they're completely unplayable, and this isn't a good showing for the 9070 XT either. Eye racing always tends to be a good look for Nvidia, and we see that again with the 5080 here. It's clearly able to outshine both the 4080 Super and a 5070 Ti. A lot of us still think in frames per second, so I'll have that chart in the top right. Each card's FPS is represented by the colored bar, and its percentage of on-time frames is represented by the green number and the gray bar. This also helps confirm what we can visually see in the histogram. For example, the 7900 XTX red has a higher FPS than the light blue 3080 Ti, but that blue GeForce delivered more on-time performance than the Radeon. We can see that more red data is to the right of the 11.1 millisecond line, and also more red data is farther left of the 11.1 millisecond line. So that's how a 7900 XTX can be simultaneously faster and slower than a 3080 Ti. So let's push these video cards with a harder benchmark. And for that, let's go to Zandvoort. Weather isn't an issue, but we've almost doubled the field size with multi-class racing on a tight, twisty track. We're back to the lowest resolution for the Pimax Crystal Light, which is 0.5, and I've included the entry-level cards. At this resolution, I've recycled some data from my previous video, but 5080, 7900 XT, and 9070 XT is all new data. It's hard to keep pace with all the updates. The MSI Shadow 3X leads the chart again, but perhaps not as impressive now that we've decreased the resolution. There's also little difference between the orange 5070 Ti and the green 4080 Super. Adding the bar chart in confirms what we already know. The top cards are delivering on-time performance and 90 FPS. Increasing Pimax resolution to medium and dropping the slow pokes gets us this chart. Once again, and not surprisingly, the uh, Midnight Blue 5080 leads the way. 
and it is worth talking about the 5070 Ti and the 4080 Super. Once again, they're pretty close in performance, maybe a slight advantage to the 5070 Ti. But that tall spike of frame time distribution, right around uh, uh, 10 point something milliseconds, means a lot of the data is just on the threshold of being on time. Stated differently, if I were to increase the iRacing graphics just a little bit, maybe I add in 3D foliage or I increase the MSAA to four times, all of a sudden those two graphics cards don't have the performance and they will be late. That's why you want more GPU headroom before that 11.1 millisecond line in this case, so that your performance is more consistent track to track. So in my opinion, if I was tuning these cards, I would back off the Pimax render resolution from 0.75 to 0.65, giving us more headroom for demanding scenarios. Speaking of, let's step into the rain at Portimao. The circuit is completely drenched with standing water and we have a large GT3 grid. I feel like the higher resolution and clearer displays on Pimax Crystal Light does help with the rain, but a wall of water is still a wall of water. And when the rooster tails of spray kicks up, it's, it's something. I do not benchmark with SSR. I think that's only good for post-race replays and capturing footage. It's just way too expensive of a feature to use in real-time racing. I don't recommend it. Benchmarking again at the lowest possible resolution, and it's tough on these graphics cards. Only the top three NVIDIA GPUs are able to deliver on-time performance. Adding in the FPS and on-time performance metrics in the top right, we can see it's pretty close for the 7900 XTX, the 3080 Ti, and even the 9070 XT. Dropping iRacing graphics or maybe even culling the image could get us better performance and on-time delivery. Meanwhile, the 5080 just crushes this torture test in the rain. Once again, it is standing out from the 5070 Ti and the 4080 Super. When I was collecting the results, I got a little giddy. I was like, oh man, I wonder if this 5080 can do 0.75, could do medium resolution from Pimax in the rain. It's close, but even this 5080 can't quite get there. Considering how far off the other graphics cards are, I'm still very impressed with the 5080. About 90% of its frame times are to the left of our timeline, while the 5070 Ti was only 33% on time. The only thing to keep in mind is that when a graphics card is late in delivering its frames, it just generates a runaway train. That's why features like asynchronous warp or motion smoothing exist, um, allowing the headset to run at a lower FPS and still have a consistent image. Now, there are some problems with that, and I've talked about it previously in this video. I suppose it's a bit late to bring up the intro video now, but there it is. So I have to say, I am impressed with this little card. It's consuming usually less than 350 watts, it's smaller than my 3060 Ti, and it's a great performer. For those interested in overclocking or VRAM consumption, that's going to be in a different analysis. I did spend a little time looking at monitor performance. Here is single 4K at Zandvoort. The GeForce 5080 has a 10.5% lead over the 5070 Ti. And we also see a gain on the minimums. When I increase the resolution to triple 1440p, here are the results. This time, it only has a 6.6% lead over the 4080 Super. This is a bit surprising to me, but it's preliminary results. I have a lot more to do. Now, bumping it up to triple 4K, still at Zandvoort, the performance gain is 12% over the 4080 Super. And I don't know, I'm a bit disappointed. I thought the gains would be higher here. And if we jump back into the rain puddles, back at Algarve, we're in the GT3 at triple 4K. Uh, here's the lead, about 11% uh, for the MSI Shadow over the Gigabyte. I plan to dig a lot deeper into triple screen performance, but the prelim these are the preliminary results, and I, I just wanted to share some of them with you guys. So I've been impressed with this MSI Shadow 3X. The 5080 is fast in VR. I think it might be worth it, but the triple screens, mm, I'm hesitant about that right now. So stay tuned to the channel for more results. Oh, and if you're curious how the performance was over 60 minutes during my league race, 
here are the results. These were the same uh, test bench uh, settings. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching.